Because it turned on me. The only reason I'm still here is because of God's amazing grace. When I think about what could have happened to me, no, it should have happened to me, but it did not happen to me. All I can say is through many dangers, toils and snares, I have already come. It was grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me on. Is there a shout in the house that will testify I'm only here because God's grace gave me chance chance after chance after chance after now I didn't say God's grace gave me a second chance I ran out of my second chances a long time ago but God kept on forgiving me God kept on loving me God kept on making me into what God intends for me to be God, how we thank you and praise you for the fact that you indeed fight our battles. You live, you are real, and for that we thank you and praise you. We thank you, oh God, for this moment that you have impregnated with such powerful possibilities for revival, renewal, for healing, for hope, for empowerment, for deliverance, we thank you for what you were up to. And for the fact that we are not here by accident, we're here because you planned it. And now that you have arranged to meet us here and you are here, we need a word from you. We need to hear from you. If we don't hear from you, God, what shall we do? So please remove any distractions that may divert our attention. Don't let me or anything in me or about me get in the way of what you were up to and what you want to say and accomplish through me. Hide me behind the cross and help us to see Jesus and we'll give you all glory and all honor. So stand in my body, take over my mind and think your thoughts. Take my mouth now and speak with power your word. Bless your word, give power to your word. Let your word go forth with such power that none of us leave here the same way we came. But go ahead and speak. Have your way. Use me for your glory and for your honor. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. And hallelujah. God is good and God is worthy of worship. God is worthy to be praised. Again, I am a peacock proud and honeymoon happy to be here at Calvary in Jamaica, Queens. And of course, I have been richly blessed as always by the warmth of your worship and fellowship uh, during these days of renewal and revival. I often say when I come here that you do a lot more for me than I could ever hope to do for you. And so I thank you so much for uh, your kindness and for uh, your graciousness. I especially I want to say thank you to my friend and brother, your pastor, Dr. Victor T. Victor T. Hall, for uh, who he is and for all that God is doing through him and with him. Uh, I get excited about the fact and challenged by the fact that as brilliant as he is, he's got the nerve to be in school uh, furthering his education. Now, y'all not impressed with that, but I am because, again, it would be real easy for him to just chill on his mental, intellectual accomplishments already, and yet he sees the need for continued growth. And is that not what life is all about? I think it was Paul that said, I'm forgetting what's behind me and pressing toward the mark of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. There's a, a holy dissatisfaction that says, I'm going to keep on pressing and keep on getting better. So I think we ought to thank God for not only a visionary teacher and preacher, but thank God for a pastor who is always modeling what it means to aim higher and get better. What a gift Pastor Hall is to me and to the body of Christ. So thank you so much, Pastor Hall, for letting me come, and thank you for, for your motto as a man and as a, as a minister. Uh, again, I'm glad to see 
uh, my beloved sister, Marvela Hall. Marvela has blessed us at Friendship West in so many ways, and so I just want to thank her publicly for not only her friendship and sisterhood, but also for uh, just being a gift and being a blessing uh, to the body of Christ. Uh, her uh, road dog is here, Deb, and I'm glad to have uh, my wonderful wife in the house, and uh, amen. Yeah, give Deb some love. I continue to marvel uh, at the fact that uh, she looks even better today than she did when we got married 30 years ago. And so I thank God for, for how she does that. How does she do that? Uh, where, where's the, uh, is the office manager here? I'm looking for the office manager. The office manager, I'm very proud of her. I think y'all should know that by now. Uh, I love her dearly and just thank God uh, for her. She told me she was going to cook uh, today so we could eat afterwards. So maybe the office manager's cooking. I don't know. Uh, but she's supposed to be here. Uh, hopefully I'll see her soon. Uh, I think I see uh, Vic in the house and I see Ayana. What's up? Ayana and Naya. I got the most awesome God children alive and I'm so proud of them. And I thank God for each and every one of them. I want to call your attention in these few moments to a passage of scripture found in uh, the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3. There in Ephesians chapter 3, in the 14th verse, we find these words. For this reason, I kneel before the Father. In these few moments, I'd like to use the subject from which to preach, I'm taking a knee. I'm taking a knee. I understand from the office manager that uh, you all have been uh, dealing with prayer for quite some time. And so uh, based on that info, that intel from the office manager, I'm going to uh, talk tonight about I'm taking a knee. Flipping the script is a colorful colloquialism from the arena of theater that is used as a metaphor to speak of the fact that there are those who will flip the script in the, concept, in the context of a conversation in order to further their agenda. Flipping the script, my sisters and brothers, is the age in which we live even now. Flipping the script is manifest in what? Alternative facts, which are whole lies. Flipping the script is revealed when people refer to news that does not fit fit what they want as fake news and so they engage in flipping the script and of course you don't have to look at the arena of politics to learn about flipping the script I believe if you live long enough life will flip the script on you no wonder Jay Wallace Hamilton said our lives are like novels in which we set out to write one story but then life edits it and writes a completely different story life will flip the script on you and already I'm in somebody's Kool-Aid I just called out your flavor because you know what it means to have life flip the script on you God will flip the script on you have you ever walked by faith into a shut door of disappointment life will flip the script God will flip the script and my sisters and brothers we live in an age where the script is continuously getting flipped y'all not feeling me let me call Jay-Z to the witness stand and Jay-Z testifies through rap my pops got a liver disorder my whole living's disordered I just got his living room ordered y'all missed that but Jay-Z who did not have the healthiest relationship with his dad all of a sudden things are coming together but then everything falls apart because his pops got a liver disorder and somebody your name ain't Jay-Z but you you know what it means in a real sense to have life flip the script on you. I'm still not coming through. I see if I can make this plain. Is that not what happened during the recent NFL season? 46 minus 1 had gone down to stand and endorse a candidate for the Senate there in Alabama and all of a sudden he got off script and had the unmitigated gall and the arrogant audacity to flip 
flip the script. What did he do? He said, don't you wish that NFL owners, when they see these players disrespecting the American flag, would simply fire them? You're fired. Ain't that a trip? He's flipping the script, and you understand why. Because the NFL players following the lead of Colin Kaepernick were not in a real sense, my sisters and brothers, disrespecting the flag, but they were using their protest in order to point to the injustice that is going on in this country when it comes to the blue taking black lives as if they don't matter and serving as judge, jury, and executioner. And as a consequence, my sisters and brothers, Colin Kaepernick refused, don't miss this, to stand up during the national anthem. Why? Because he refused to not stand. He refused to stand up for a flag under whose oppression we've lost a number of black bodies. You're still not getting it. In a real sense, Colin Kaepernick and Eric Reed are now out of jobs. They can't get contracts in the NFL. Why? Because of the fact that there are those who are flipping the script. Why? Because they don't like protest. Protest has a way of making the custodians of the status quo uncomfortable and as a consequence they will flip the script doesn't it blow your mind that people hypocritically they saluted Muhammad Ali in his death but the same people that were loving on Ali can't stand Colin Kaepernick you preaching Freddie Haynes you got that right because my sisters and brothers doesn't it blow your mind that Muhammad Ali who was hated in the 60s and even in the, the 70s because of his stand against the unjust war in Vietnam and using his platform to give voice to the cries of the voiceless African American impoverished Ali was hated back then but as he became silent and they saw that he was right all of a sudden they began to love him but now Colin Kaepernick in the tradition of Muhammad Ali takes a stand and because people are, uh, are, are afraid of protest and uncomfortable at protest they decide it's time to flip the script and that my sisters and brothers is what's going on in our nation the script is getting flipped because they're uncomfortable with protest but it, does it not blow your mind that people who next week are going to celebrate and commemorate the martyrdom of Martin Luther King Jr. 50 years ago April 4th he was slain on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee next week. Everybody's going to have a dream, but they're going to ignore the fact that he used the weapon of nonviolent protest in order to fight the American nightmare. Y'all missing this. I got to help you. In a real sense, he used the weapon of protest so much so that by the time he died, he was one of the most hated people in the country. Y'all still not getting it. Martin King used the weapon of protest, but he wasn't the first one to do it. The Boston Tea Party was a weapon of protest, but of course we get amnesia about that. You do recognize it when Rosa Parks sat down and took a stand. That was a weapon of protest. It wasn't popular at the time, but history has proven her to be right. When the Freedom Riders got on buses and rode throughout the South to integrate interstate travel, they were seen at that time as doing something negative. 60% of Americans were against the freedom rides. I'm not even done. Do you know the sit-in movement? Over 70% of Americans were against the, the sit-in movement, and yet they proved to be right. I'm just trying to let you know that whenever America has gotten better, it is because someone took an unpopular stand, even while people were flipping the script. I'm still not coming through. I'll see if I can make it real plain. Uh, two years ago, I'm the guest speaker for the NAACP Freedom Fund Banquet in Connecticut. Check out what happened. I'm the guest speaker, and I woke up the next morning because I had a prayer breakfast to speak at here in the NYC for an organization whose name slips me right now, and the prayer breakfast was being held in Manhattan, and so as a consequence, 
I had to catch a 6 a.m. flight. I arrived at the airport there in Connecticut. Don't miss this at 4.45 a.m., which really ain't my time of day. But I get there early because I've got to catch this 6 a.m. flight that will get me to the NYC in time for the prayer breakfast. Here's what happened. I arrived at the airport, and do you know my sisters and brothers? There were lines that were going all the way outside. That tripped me out. It's too early for them to be messing with me like this. I get in line, and the line is moving too slow. I decide to go inside and find out what the deal is. It was then that I discovered that during the early mornings of that particular morning, that construction was going on, and a construction worker had hit a line, and the line that the construction worker hit had knocked the system down. The system was down, and as a consequence, they're having to write. Here it is, every boarding pass. So y'all know how slow that was. Flights are delayed, and I'm in a jacked up situation. I've got a prayer breakfast to preach, but I can't get to it because the system is broken. Y'all didn't get it. I gotta say it one more time. I was scheduled to take off, but I could not take off because of a system that was not working for me. There it is, and I'm simply trying to say that oftentimes in this country, we've experienced a flipping of the script because of a system that does not work for us. Y'all recognize by now that the criminal justice system is criminal and downright unjust, and y'all know by now it does not work for us. It doesn't work for us when we get arrested and find ourselves having to get out on bail only to discover that bail is only for those who are up in and rich and not for those who are down and out and people have spent too much time in jail without even getting a hearing or a trial because there's a need for bail reform because the system ain't working. Y'all still not getting it. I gotta push it further and so my sisters and brothers repeatedly I could call the names of black bodies slain by those who wear blue and we discover they are never held accountable even when they lie in their report about what happened in the shooting of that unarmed black body and yet they're not held accountable why because a broken system ain't working for us y'all still missing this you do recognize economically the system doesn't work when you have the richest country in the world that has a child poverty rate that is insane and sadly 40 percent of all homeless people work full-time jobs and yet they do not make enough into order to get a place to stay i'm letting y'all know the system is broken and the system ain't working and since the system ain't broken and it's not working it's in a real sense a result of a script that has been flipped but i've got some shouting material for you because in our text understand the writer of this emancipating enlightening and edifying epistle tradition says it's the apostle paul when says it takes place as a prison epistle meaning he's in prison in rome and the book lets us know while in prison in rome he writes the church at ephesus i'm about to blow your mind because the text lets us know evidently while in prison as light puts the squeeze on him it brings something out of him that wouldn't have come out had he not been in that jacked up place do you not know that God is so good that God can use something that goes bad in order to bring out something in you that is good and the next thing you know it's all good though it began bad and some of y'all ready to shout right now because is that not your testimony that a lot of the good you are is a result of some bad that you've been through and the Bible lets us know that here is this edifying emancipating epistle coming perhaps from one who is in prison unjustly the system did not work for him but look what the book says the book says he writes this enlightening epistle and I love the book of Ephesians the womanist scholar Mitzi Smith says it reads like a legal corporate document that talks about merging two corporate bodies one foreign 
and one domestic and you understand why because you have Gentile Christians and Jewish Christians the Jewish Christians are treating the Gentile Christians as second class citizens it's a part of a system that is broken stay with me and because the system is broken here comes the gospel globe trotter writing them to say understand y'all been flipping the script but we have a new executive producer and the new executive producer Jesus of Nazareth has broken down the middle wall of partition therefore the flip the script that has been flipped has been rewritten by our executive producer as a consequence and here's your shout right here there's a brand new system the old system has been torn down by the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary and his resurrection the old system is passed away a new system has now come into being read the book of Ephesians chapter 1 is enough to make you shout because in chapter 1 he says as children of God we are we are we have access to every spiritual blessing in a heavenly places y'all didn't shout we used to sing in the old school church here bring your wounded hearts here tell your anguish for earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal did y'all miss your shout right there it simply means that while you're catching hell on earth you've got access to resources from heaven that will give you power to overcome the hell you deal with on earth y'all still not shout let me push this thing further further in chapter one it says we have access to the same power that raised Jesus from the dead do you not know that whenever you go in through something that God says don't you trip off on that because I have a track record I can raise a three day dead Jesus now if I can raise a three day dead Jesus I can handle the haters on your job if I can raise a three day dead Jesus I can supply all of your needs according to my riches in glory if I can raise a three day dead Jesus I can make a way out of no way and so my sisters and brothers understand that's chapter one chapter two gets even hotter because it says we were dead in our sins and trespasses but God's amazing grace has given us new life and we've gone from being a mess to being a masterpiece that's why it says that we are saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves lest anyone should boast we are God's workmanship God's masterpieces God's poems all by the amazing grace of God now if y'all can't shout about grace I gotta check your pulse because it dawned on me the only reason I'm still here is because of God's amazing grace when I think about what could have happened to me no it should have happened to me but it did not happen to me all I can say is through many dangers toils and snares I have already come it was grace that brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me on is there a shout in the house that will testify I'm only here because God's grace gave me chance after chance after chance after now I didn't say God's grace gave me a second chance I ran out of my second chances a long time ago but God kept on forgiving me God kept on loving me God kept on making me into what God intends for me to be ain't nothing like the grace of God but hold on, it gets even hotter because it also says in chapter 2 that when Jesus died, he broke down the middle wall of partition between us. I'm not even done because now in chapter 3, check out what the gospel globe trotter is writing. It just makes me want to run out of here shouting because he says to those Gentiles being treated as second class citizens, y'all need to know the script has been rewritten. We got a brand new system that has overruled the uh, broken system and because of that for this reason for this cause I kneel before the father y'all didn't shout for this cause I go down in prayer on your behalf y'all still missing your shout Paul is saying I know something about the power of prayer prayer is so powerful I can get locked up in a Philippian jail but at midnight while me and Silas are praying I 
God will hear our prayer and God will activate the Richter scale in Philippi and send an earthquake and that's how you had the first jailhouse rock because God heard our prayer and God set us free there's power in prayer well I'm talking too fast let me slow my roll and see if I can help you I learned this heavily during the 70s I had a wonderful grandmother named sweetie I had the best grandmothers to ever live sweetie and my grandmother in Dallas grand and sweetie this is the 70s I grew up in San Francisco in the 70s we were in the midst of a vicious drought there was no rain to be found anywhere and of course it's the 70s we didn't have the weather app or the weather channel all we had were three stations on TV the local ABC NBC and CBS affiliate and that's where you got your weather from well I'm watching the weather one particular evening it says no rain tomorrow I then the next day went to go visit my grandmother sweetie check out what happened I knock on the door she opens up the door darling so good to see you grabs me hugs me I hug her back darling I'm glad to see you how you feeling I'm not doing too well it's about to rain I said darling what are you talking about it's about to rain and what does that have to do with you not feeling too well she said darling it's about to rain I said no darling I watched the news the weatherman last night said there's no rain in the fork I don't care what the weatherman said I know it's about to rain I said how do you know it's about to rain because I can feel it in my knees that there's something going on in my knees that lets me know there's about to be a shift in the atmosphere there's something going on in my knees that lets me know that the climate is about to change the environment is about to have some rain because there's a correlation between what's happening in my knees and the environment I find myself in come here and let's shout because is there anybody here who knows if you spend some time on your knees that God will shift the atmosphere of the world you find yourself in I guess y'all not believing me but the Bible says Daniel took a knee and when Daniel took a knee he was thrown in the lion's den and the good news is because he took a knee even lions who were hungry could not eat him because Daniel knows there's a correlation between what goes on in your knees and in the atmosphere y'all still didn't shout Jesus took a knee the Bible says in the garden of Gethsemane one Monday Thursday night he knelt down and prayed and the book says there appeared unto him an angel that came to strengthen him isn't God good that God says I may not take the cup out of your hand but I'll bring an angel to stand with you and give you just what you need Jesus took a knee and all I'm trying to say if you take a knee God will give you power God will give you strength what does it mean to take a knee I'm almost done the text says to begin with when you take a knee I love the text he says for this reason I kneel before the father man I thought y'all would be shouting on that one because that was real hot right there uh cancel your subscription to what other folk have to say about you because let's keep it 100 if you're not careful it's some low down people out there who are so low they can't stand to see you going high and as a consequence they will talk about you they will diss you dismiss you disrespect you why because they like to label you in order to limit you they like to define you so they can confine you but look what this text says Paul says for this reason I I, here's your shout kneel before the father I know why you're not shouting uh, uh, the word father is mind-blowing in this passage uh, preaching for Victor Hall who's going back to school get his PhD I had to do my homework so I did my homework Vic and check out the word father is not the one in the Lord's Prayer the model prayer where we say Abba no it's not Abba it's a different word used for father the word used for father that Paul is using it's gonna mess you up is a word that has to do with the family of humanity and the fact that we all descend from 
one creator God get this Paul is writing to Gentiles who've been made to feel they are second class citizens but Paul says no we serve the same father we are descendant from the same creator y'all missing your shout I'll help you I never will forget this who was it the late pastor of the Wheat Street Baptist Church William Holmes Borders told the story during the Great Depression of a brother who was who was doing all he can to make keep uh, uh, doing all he can to save his money but it was the Great Depression it was even harder for black folk and he found a rich person and he went by the mansion of the rich person and knocked on the front door the rich owner opened up the door and when the rich owner opened up the door guess what the rich owner said I know you want some food here's what you do go around to the back I'll meet you at the back door ain't that jacked up go already treat an impoverished person as a second class citizen during a great depression he meets him at the back door and says hold on before I give you this food you've got to pray now repeat after me this prayer our father and that's when the brother shot back your father and then he said I didn't say I, your father I said our father repeat after me our father he said your father and he said it one more time out no, your father he said listen you not helping me I'm trying to give you this food but you won't pray right why do you keep saying your father when I'm praying our father he said because that presupposes that we're in the same family and my daddy surely wouldn't have me come to the back to get some food from someone in the family he had enough sense to recognize when you know God for yourself you don't allow anyone to treat you second class because you are God's child y'all still missing your shout let me see if I can push this a little bit further I guess I'm putting it like this he writes these treated like second class citizens and says our father that means that you have the same I love this in your spiritual DNA the same attributes of our heavenly father and that ought to define who you are here, here, here it is here it is uh uh uh, I was I was I, I was out of town last year and you all's current office manager uh, knew I was out of town and so she went to this march she went to this march and when she gets to the march they find out that she's my daughter and that she's there and they ask my daughter they ask Avni she's y'all's office manager now they ask her if she would like to speak at the march and y'all guess what she only had 15 minutes to get something together and she got something together and the next thing I know my phone was blowing up I'm out of town and people are telling me what my daughter said when she was speaking at this rally but it was causing me to cringe because it was so radical I mean she was going ballistic on racism she was attacking structures of injustice and I'm cringing because I'm afraid for her and the next thing I know my phone rings it's your office manager and she's calling me to tell me about the speech and she's saying daddy and I said this I said oh she said daddy and I said that I said Ugh. she said daddy I said all of this I said Albany that was real radical of you she said yeah that's that Freddie Haynes in me and I'm simply trying to say that what Albany was saying is you can't really talk about what I'm doing because you are in me and because I'm I'm your child guess what what is in you is also a part of me and y'all I ain't trying to get y'all to shout off of that but I am trying to let y'all know when you know who your daddy is every now and then there ought to be something in your character that says that's my daddy in me every time you serve someone who can't pay you back that's your daddy in you every time you open up a door for someone they could not open up themselves that's your daddy daddy in you every time you show love for people who are downright hateful and folks say how did you do it just say that's my daddy in me But let's push it further because the text says not only should you cancel your subscription to what other folk think about you, say about you. I like how Dick Gregory says it. Dick Gregory in the 50s says he went to this store. He went to this restaurant in the south and when he got to the restaurant he asked for some fried chicken and the woman said we don't serve in words here. And Gregory responded good I wasn't ordering any to get me some fried chicken because when you know who you are it's not what folk think about you. 
It's what you think about yourself based on the God who created you. I'm a child of the king. I'm the salt of the earth, the light of the world. God's special treasure, a royal priesthood. Cancel your subscription to what other folk have to say about you. But then the text goes on to say, and this blesses me right here, and that is always understand that God has a way of instilling. No. God has a way of energizing. No. God has a way of fueling you. No. God will put in you what you need to handle what's around you. And as long as you are empowered from the inside out, you won't be defeated by stuff that tries to come at you from the outside in that's what I've been trying to say I love it because look what the text says further the text says I'm praying for you for this reason I kneel before the father I'm taking a knee not only for you to cancel your subscription to what other folks say about you but I'm taking a knee so that you will be instilled with power from a, with from above you that gets inside of you so you can overcome what other people have to say about you don't you want Understand the real strength of black people has never been in what we drove but what drove us the real strength of us is not where you live but in but but who's living where you live your power is not outside of you your power is inside of you huh I thought that would get you because a whole lot of folk are well-dressed nobodies. Uh, they have the latest designer clothes, but they ain't nobody on the inside. And if you ain't somebody on the inside, I don't care what clothes you put on on the outside, you just a dressed up nobody. A dressed up nobody can have a $500 weave, but got a 10 cent head. A dressed up nobody can have on a fly suit and yet have no direction. You've got to have more than just what you have on the outside your real strength and power is on the inside uh, 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 I, I guess I give it to y'all like this I I'm really blessed really blessed to have good peeps in my life and I got hooked up and this week this week staying in a fly hotel fly hotel don't hate celebrate and one day you can participate staying in a fly hotel and check out what happened. Checked in on Tuesday. Checked in on Tuesday, Marv. And this is what went down. I checked in on Tuesday. And here's what happened. Blew my mind. Checked in on Tuesday. And so, so I was escorted to my room by, by the bellman. I didn't need any escort. I travel light. I don't need no escort. He says, but I've got to show you how your room operates. And so we get to the room. And he says, check out this remote control. And Marv, he showed me this remote control. He said, now, you see the room right now? now you can literally change the atmosphere in the room with your remote control I said for real for real he said yeah with this remote control you can shift the atmosphere in the room and so I said tell me how that works and he said well watch this he pressed the button and nothing happened I said wow I see this is really hot right here you shifted this atmosphere it's the same before as it was before you pressed that button he then said I'm sorry let me try it again bam nothing happened and finally I said well I guess I'm gonna have to do this manually and I went to the shade to try to lift up the shade and do you know the shade would not move he said it don't work like that it only operates through the remote control he says hold on he then pulled a battery out of his pocket opened up the remote and the next thing you know he put the battery in pressed the button and what I was trying to lift manually it all of a sudden raised up and sunlight came into the room why because it could not do anything before because what was inside of it was dead but once it was replaced with something new it had the power to change the whole room y'all not getting this thing I'm trying to say when you know Jesus for yourself the Holy Ghost gets inside of you and the Holy Ghost then gives you the power to shift the area where you find yourself so y'all when you go back to work make sure you recognize greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world if God be for you who can be against you well I gotta wrap it now 
But finally the text says our real security is knowing we are wired by the love of Almighty God. That's what the text says. Our security. I'm secure because I'm loved by Almighty God. And Paul talks about the life of God's love. The breath of God's love. The depth and the height of God's love. And all of that love is what makes you secure in who you are. Knowing you've been loved by God. And when you're loved by God. God, you can handle anyone else's hate because God loves you whether you like it or not God loves you and God has loved you so much that God manifests that love in giving that's why to be a Christian if you show enough claim you love it manifests itself in giving how I guess y'all not getting it guess what the Bible says God loved and God gave I go back into history and in creation and quote Charles Adams God said Said in creation God gave heat to the sun God gave shine to the moon God gave twinkle to stars and God kept on giving God gave height to mountains and 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 and, and depth to oceans and God kept on giving God gave red to roses and fragrance to flowers and God kept on giving until God took some dust and gave his breath to that dust and humans became living souls because God is a giving God. God gave Adam and Eve to each other. He gave Eve to Adam and Adam to Eve. And then God gave both of them a garden. And when they messed up, God kept on giving and gave them children. And God kept on giving until God gave Noah an ark. God gave Abraham a promise. God gave Jacob a ladder. God gave Joseph a dream. God gave Moses a rod. God gave Joshua the victory. God gave the the prophets a word and God kept on giving until God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and y'all know when Jesus came Jesus came giving he gave sight to the blind he gave salvation to the lost he gave food to the hungry he gave life to those who were dead and he kept on giving all the way to an old rugged cross he he gave his hands to some nails he gave his head to a crown of thorns he gave his body to a cross and he died but early Sunday morning he gave the tomb back went back to glory and gave the Holy Ghost to his followers and he still giving he woke me up this morning he started me on my way we serve a giving God now how you gonna serve a giving God and be cheap If you love God and love God's church and love God's people, love manifests itself in giving. You preaching? I, I wish y'all could see how y'all look right now because right now you have the saints and you have the ain'ts. The saints are shouting because the saints know you can't beat God's giving no matter how you try. The saints are shouting because they've seen God open up a door, the windows of heaven. And do I have some saints in here? The saints are shouting because God is a giving God. And the more you give, the more God gives back to you. Uh oh. But now the ain'ts, they ticked off. That's why I don't go to church. All they want is my money. It ain't your money. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Everything you have, God gave it to you. God woke you up. God gave you strength. God opened the right door at the right time. God brought the right people in your life at the right time and did just the right thing. So surely you can give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. You know what? I, I just preached my heart out. And, and I just knew y'all would be shouting by now. Because I, I gave it all I had. And, and I figured y'all would be shouting. And then it hit me. It hit me. I'm at Calvary. And y'all know how to listen to a sermon. And y'all, 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 y'all want to shout. But you're holding out on the shout. Because you're listening. 
listening and thinking. And Jeremiah Wright says, thinking folk ought to shout more. And shouting folk ought to think more. And I know what y'all are doing. Y'all are thinking. And I feel your thoughts. And you're saying, Freddie Haynes, don't you leave here until you tell us about Connecticut. Tell us, did you make it to New York to deliver the prayer breakfast address? Don't you leave here, Freddie Haynes, until you let us know if you made it to New York on time. I'm glad y'all thinking because y'all, while I'm standing there trying to figure out what's next, I then got on the phone and called the person who was running the event. I said, listen, I'm not going to make it because of what happened. He said, yeah, I just saw that something has gone wrong, but don't you worry. Before you called, I talked to my son because I have a private jet and so I'm sending my private jet now you're going to have to get an Uber and take the Uber over to another airport because that system is broken and since that system is broken we got to go with a new system and the new system is going to help you get from where you are to where you need to be the new system is going to let you take off but I've got to send my son to get you and my son is already on the private jet I wish y'all had seen me because I got an Uber over to the other airport and y'all when they pulled up in that private jet I wish y'all had seen me I cut a holy dance on the tarmac because it was a show enough private jet oh don't be hate you need to celebrate right now don't hate celebrate one day you can participate and y'all I, 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 I took I took I took a Barack stroll <laughs> waved at folk person at the at, 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 at the bottom of the stairs I they weren't even military I just went <laughs> walked up the steps got on the plane sat down in a wide leather chair I wasn't even done because you got to press a button and rear back I'm digging the scene with my preacher lean woo woo and y'all, the thing took off. I got to the NYC on time. I pull up to the prayer breakfast. How did all of it work? It worked because I called the father. And the father sent the son. And the son came and got me and took me where I needed to go. I'll see y'all next time. But is there anybody here who knows if you call on the name of the father, the father has already sent the son. And the son will come see about you. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer oh what peace we often forfeit oh what needless pain we bear oh because we do not carry everything to God in prayer I don't know about y'all I'm about to take a